Welcome to what I would describe Australian sports night of nights, the 33rd edition of the Sport Australia Hall of Fame Induction Awards Gala Dinner, proudly presented by the world's greatest airline, Etihad Airways. Tonight is all about the pride of a nation, our nation, as we reflect upon and celebrate Australia's magnificent sporting achievements, both past, present and, Nicole, those to come in the future. This evening, eight sporting greats from on and off the field will be honoured with induction into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. We will celebrate our rising stars as we introduce the scholarship recipients and we'll also crown the winner of the Don for the year's most inspiring, inspirational sporting performance. And of course, we will meet our 39th legend of Australian sport. There is no doubt if sport was a medieval land, this would certainly be a meeting of its kings and queens. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Australian sports royalty, the members of the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. We have, over 50, we have over 50 national sporting federations represented here tonight. They include the Australian Rugby League, the AFL, cycling, swimming, rowing, soccer, cricket, boxing. The list goes on and on, over 50 federations. And the, uh, the Hall of Fame, this Hall of Fame represents the past, the present and the future. We would have more legends of their own sports and more world champions than possibly any other room in the world. And I'm really delighted to be able to represent Etihad Airways on this very special evening. Yvonne Gulagong Corley, my personal favourite. This amazing champion said every time she hit the ball against her backyard fence, she dreamed and imagined she was in Wimbledon. For me, this demonstrates one of the most beautiful and one of the most fundamental joys of sport. While we may not go on to win 14 Grand Slam tennis titles or become world number one, there's an opportunity for all of us, regardless of our race, regardless of our religion or our background, we can all hit a ball against a backyard fence, kick a football, pick up a cricket bat and be transported in our minds to success. Our first scholarship recipient was the star of this year's Nitro Athletics in Melbourne. Would you please welcome Riley Day, who will be mentored by 2000 Olympic water polo gold medalist, Deb Watson. Our next recipient is a skilled sailor and proud West Aussie. Please welcome Nia Jerwood. Nia will be mentored by dual Olympic gold medalist and the first female hockey player to compete at four Olympic Games, Leanne Tooth. Our third recipient is skateboarding prodigy and recent X Games medalist, Poppy Star Olsen. Poppy will be mentored by seven-time world surfing champion, Lane Beachley. And next up is para snowboarder, Ben Tudhope who is being mentored by Wallabies great 91 World Cup winning captain, Nick Farr-Jones. And to our final scholarship recipient, and it is Australia's top ranked junior weightlifter. His name is Ben Ward. Congratulations, Ben. He's going to be mentored by none other than Wallabies great, the man who captained Australia to victory in the 99 World Cup, Tim Horan. Let's meet our first inductee, a man who soared to the greatest of heights. Steve Hooker, OAM, is inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. You know, it comes around once every four years. Uh, it's the thing that you think about when you're growing up as a young athlete. Um, I was lucky to have an Olympian in my family, so I always had that as, a, as, as something that I knew was sort of possible. So, um, absolutely. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily the, like the hardest win. There were other things that were tougher and things to get through, but I mean, that was, um, that was the night that sort of stands out for sure. As an athlete member, Debbie Handley Cummins, BEM, is inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Please welcome. 
to the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Water polo great, Debbie Handley Cummins. And in 2000 in Sydney, how did you feel when the girls lined up and were presented with the gold medals? Well, I felt honoured that they had continued a legacy that I had started. I was the roots of starting women's water polo in this country and that they continued what I had started and went to the top. Ladies and gentlemen, six years after his passing, the late Frank Ponter is posthumously inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. He's represented tonight by his very dear friend of over 40 years, Cheryl Manolini. Please make her welcome. You knew him well. What do you think he would have thought about being inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame? I know that tonight would have brought tears to Frank's eyes. I actually got his ashes out the other day and put it on the bench and I actually read the letter out that Tanya sent to me. So he knows that he, this is happening tonight. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Cheryl, thank you so much for being with us and representing Frank tonight. Thank you. For her contribution to sports medicine, Dr Grace Bryant, OAM, is inducted as a general member into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Please welcome to the stage. I can see that we've been mentoring the same as we started talking with the athletes in my world, that we're mentoring young doctors to come along and have the interest to be involved in the amateur sports and the major you know, uh, events that we, and uh, it, experience that. And now, Troy Sachs, OAM, becomes the first wheelchair basketballer to be inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Welcome, one of the absolute greats from wheelchair basketball, Troy Sachs. I was uh, fortunate enough to have a, a mum and dad that uh, worked seriously hard in, in raising us and, uh, and instilling us that uh, I think uh, hard work is the way to uh, make your way in the world. Uh, a little motto of mine was uh, work hard, play easy. And I think also for me too, it was uh, out of fear of losing. I thought if I was always working hard and training harder and pushing more weights and shooting more baskets that uh, whenever I did get on the court against somebody and I could have a crack at him and we could go to battle. And now Lauren Burns OAM becomes the first athlete from the sport of Taekwondo to be inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. I very much knew that I was going to win on that day if I gave it my heart and soul. So I felt like if I gave it absolutely, it was like every single bit of my being, if I put it out there on that day, I knew that I could beat all of those yeah. girls. So. You know, in Taekwondo, all the fights are on one day. Yeah. I just had to make sure that I paced myself throughout the day. As an athlete member for the sport of cycling, Brad McGee, OAM, is inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Please welcome a cycling superstar, Bradley McGee. It's a special night all round, and um, I really just a special mention to my wife, Shani. <laughs> oh, I'm such an old softy. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. There's so many people involved in, in an athlete's career, and I, I, in some ways I felt oh, begrudgingly I'm, I'm going to drag Shani back through, you know, what was a lengthy part of both of our lives. Of course, now we've got kids and, and, and we've got our own careers in, in other fields, but um, Shani, um, thank you. Well done. Bradley McGee, congratulations on being inducted. Well done. As an athlete member for the Sport of Australian Rules Football, Tony Lockett is inducted into the Sport of Australia Hall of Fame. But he's been pretty good today, hasn't he? Unbelievable, Sandy. Um, yeah, you better kick me. I think I can't. Uh, I can't believe it. Actually, it's um, been a great ride, um, and I feel very honoured, very privileged, very proud uh, to um, to be here tonight. And uh, amongst all these great athletes, very humbling. Thank you very much. It gives me great pleasure, on behalf of all of your fellow members and everyone here tonight, to warmly welcome you into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Congratulations. But I am delighted to announce that the winner of the Don Award is Jeff Horn. For the winner by unanimous decision. And now, the 
boy from up north, what does that standing ovation tell you coming down here to Melbourne? That's amazing. Uh, it's, a, it's a dream come true. I'm still, I feel, feel like I'm living the dream. It's what my coach always says to me and it still feels like a dream right now. You're one of the greatest underdogs of all time. How strong was your self-belief? Look, I, I think that's, that's my strength. Is I, I just believe in myself and I put 100% into training and when you mix the two together and you believe in yourself and you put that 100% in, that's, that's when that magic happens. You've made an exciting year in sport even more exciting. You've come out of the blue as far as many people are concerned and you're a world champion and well, I'm sure you know the name Jenny, Johnny Famishon who's here tonight. We've got two world champions of boxing in this room tonight. It's been a long time since we've had that. Congratulations, you are the 2017 Don. Thank here you. is your award. On any Saturday, on the water, in the water, on a dusty field in the Northern Territory, or on a green field in Victoria or elsewhere, there are young Australians who are imagining that they will grow up to be these legends and who are giving themselves and drawing the inspiration from these people because the legends give our children the ability to dream, the ability to aspire, the ability to imagine. And for that, we are better and our country is better. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to recognise Australia's next great sporting legend. You were given a couple of photos when you were a young girl. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, when I was a young athlete, I, I went to Perth. I was coached by a bloke over there for a little while, when I was really young, early teens. And he gave me a couple of images to try and copy. One was of a man running, a bloke by the name of Lloyd LeBeach, a big American black runner who had a beautiful running style, beautiful action, beautiful arm action, beautiful high knee lift wonderful way of getting off the ground. And the other one was of Marge Jackson coming off the starting blocks. I still have those photos today. They're very precious to me for a lot of reasons, but they gave me a lead into learning how to cover the ground well. Something that, um, was, as we saw a moment ago, that may be the most famous of them all, uh, notice when he saw you run in 1968, Jesse Owens had won the, the famous four in 1936. Can you tell us a little bit about all of that? I was introduced to the great Jesse Owens. And Jesse just wanted to talk about how we covered the ground. He liked the way I moved across the ground. And we probably had an hour and a half together. And it was probably one of the inspirations after winning the silver medal to keep me driving forward and actually want to better myself as an athlete. And it was quite an inspiring moment. I don't think there are many people in Australia that can say they've met Jesse Owens and had a long chat to me, and they're certainly not going to meet him now. <laughs> there was one race that we won't forget, we both working loved. alongside one another. It was one of the great moments mm. of my life. So, Catherine, um, no, not tonight, Catherine. Raylene, what a champion, what a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Raylene Boyle. What a relief. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> I love you.